Hi and welcome to the channel. Now in today's video I'm going to be talking about and showing you these LED fuse bulbs, replacement bulbs you can get for your receiver, amplifier, anything really that uses these little miniature bulbs. Now I've got packets of them here so we're going to go through a load of colours and there are quite a few different things we're going to touch on here. So uh, let's just give a very small recap of what we're going to be talking about in this video. I'm going to be showing you the colours. Now here's a picture there of all the colours that I've tried all different combinations and that so uh, we're going to go through that stage by stage but uh, I'm going to show you I'll tell you how to take them out checking the voltage uh, saving money as well and uh, why should you bother doing this so we're going to you know um, and also finding out which ones you you know which voltage you require for your particular unit as well which uh, a few people do ask which bulb do I need all the bulbs uh, I've got from the place down below. I'm going to leave a link down below. This is where I've got all my bulbs to test out today. So there's a link down below, and these are cheap, about one pound sixty each, something like that. These are cheap little bulbs, and we're going to save a little bit of money as well if you change your incandescent to LEDs. We're going to come to all that. We're going to hopefully cover it all. So I've got quite a few bits of paper here and some pictures to throw up on the screen. Uh, I've got two receivers here as well. I'm going to talk a little bit about these as we go along. Why is one brighter than the other one? All that kind of stuff. I've used a different colour bulb here for the VU meter. We're going to be talking all about that as we go along. So I'm going to kind of break it down to different sections, I suppose. So I've got it all written down this bit of paper. Hopefully I'm not going to forget anything. Right, OK. Now, why would you bother changing these bulbs? Now, first of all, your old bulb could have blown. So that's one reason. You, know, you could have a display here with no lights on it at all. So that's one reason. Another reason, just make, want to make it pop. Now it's hard to show on video, it really is. You've got to be in the room really, but I've cleaned the front of this unit up. It's all nice and clean now. Uh, that's going to help, obviously, to clean it up, have a nice clean dial at the front, everything else. But once you put these bulbs in, some of these bulbs, it really makes it pop. It may not show on the video here, but this looks absolutely fantastic. You're going to have to trust me maybe a bit on that. But this looks absolutely, this looks like a brand new unit. Now some of you may want a brand new unit. You want to look as it looks in the 1970s or 80s you may want to give that kind of look but this really brings this up now this here you could quite easily mistaken how bright it is and how crystal clear it is and it really does pop this could be near enough a brand new unit it really can so we're going to talk all about that as we go along now like i say you may have burnt out bulbs i'm going to show you uh, that still work you may have some bulbs in there that still work they're burnt out and i'm going to show you a few pictures here or picture anyway some burnt out bulbs there on your left hand side and you can see, you know, they're quite dark. So now you're going to replace it, even with a new incandescent bulb. You may want to replace it for an LED one, but even if you put a new incandescent bulb, it's going to be a little bit brighter because, like you can see, the other ones have got to get through that burnt mark. So uh, the new ones are going to be like um, a bit brighter. They're going to be better. So even if you've got some old ones in there, they've been in there a while, you may want to take them out to put some new ones in there. Like I say, it may not be working, so that's another reason as well. And also, I think this adds value to stuff as well. If you're selling stuff on eBay or anything like that, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't bother. They just stick a unit up, haven't bothered cleaning it up, haven't tried even putting some new bulbs in, and they're getting a lot less to what they could do because, like I say, it really does make and People want it, you know, it makes it pop, but people want it working. They, they think, oh, I may not be able to change the bulbs myself, but hopefully during this video, I'm going to show you, you know, for a novice person, it's going to be quite easy to change the bulb. And one thing, oh, I've got a little plug here. That's going to come in here in a minute. So that's all right. So, okay. Like I say, we're going to be checking the voltage. What voltage bulb you require? How can I find out the voltage? Well, I'm going to give you a few methods that may be going to help you to suss out what voltage you require. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to touch on a few other bits and pieces. So let's get on with it. That's that bit of paper sorted. I've got a few bits of paper here. Now, first of all, this is the colours I got hold of. This is the colours available to me that I got hold of that I could see, like I say, from the link below. This is the place where I've got them from here in the UK. Uh, so they're the colours that are available. Obviously, in America and other places, and other places to get it from. But uh, me being in the UK, like I say, this is where I got mine. So there's the colours available that I've got. It may do one or two more colours, this bloke. I'm not too certain. But uh, I've got these colours. I thought this is going to give me a fair run of colours. So uh, what we're going to start off with first is just make sure where I am with all this. Uh, which ones of us? This is the bit of paper. I've got the wrong bit of paper down as normal. Right, so first of all, uh, we want to get to the bulbs already in there. Like, you know what I mean? It may be a bit dim. We may want to change some LED ones rather than incandescent and that kind of thing. Now, normally on, on receivers, amplifiers, depending where you've got this bulb, it could be in your car, it could be anywhere. But uh, on, on a receiver, something like this, it's usually just a few screws that takes the top off. 
and once we take the top off the front should come off now I'm going to give you a link to a couple of videos at the top there where I've done this I've took the actual top and I've took the front off give you some kind of idea a couple of links there you just see that uh, give you an idea of maybe how to go about doing your receiver now on one particular receiver some marantz there uh, i've stuck at the top there now hopefully it's a tricky bowl where you have to take a lot more out i've kind of cheated a bit but it just gives you some idea maybe you have to bend the rules if you've got a tricky bowl not all of them are tricky it's only you know all the receivers and bits and pieces i've had here that is the only one that was tricky the rest of them are pretty straightforward to get to so that's no problem but, but before we start i did mention a plug before you start anything with your receiver amplifier, whatever you're doing, especially you let you know electrical, uh, you know, with 200 240 volts, 117 volts, something like that. Make sure you've got this in your hand. You've got that and it's not plugged in. Make sure it's unplugged. You've got the plug in your hand, going to the right unit. Don't gonna get mixed up that it's accidentally on. Even though it's turned off, you still got you know this was plugged in, even though it's turned off like that. You're still going to have voltage inside and you may touch it trying to get to them bulbs. So be careful, unplug this is the best bet make sure you've got it in your hand and put it aside and you know it's definitely unplugged so that's that sorted right okay hopefully i'm not gonna be too long i'm gonna go through a few different things here right so now you want to find out what voltage your bulb is so it's, i've got four ways here i've come up with four ways of checking your voltage the first one is actually on these bulbs themselves is that uh, on the top on the cap itself it's usually the inscription it's kind of like uh, engraved in and i've sh showed you a couple of pictures there on the screen now and they will give some clues to what kind of bulb you require hopefully i'm not saying it's on every single lamp but uh, on most of them it is and that will tell you the voltage as you can see there i think i've got a 6.3 volt one and a 7 volt one and it also have the milliamps on the side as well this would range, I should imagine, between 150 milliamps to about 250 milliamps. But these are the old incandescent type bulbs. These new LED ones we're putting in would be a lot less, so you, you know, they're just going to draw less current. Uh, so, yeah, don't worry. If you've got, you know, if you've got 150 milliamps, you're going to change it for an LED one, then you're OK because it's going to draw a lot less. You haven't really got to bother checking anymore. But if you're going to change it for another incandescent one, uh, an old fashioned filament type one, you may want to double check that that is the same if it says 150 milliamps 200 milliamps something like that that you get the same milliamp one if it's an incandescent one but if you change it for led all you've got to worry about is the voltage so that's one way of doing it by the little cap like say that little silver cap it could be engraved there number two is a circuit diagram and i've got stuck up four circuit diagrams there you may be able to download a circuit diagram for your machine or your particular unit and in that circuit diagram you're going to have these kind of symbols that look like a, a round or square thing with a filament like a, a swirly pattern inside <clears throat> and these are bulbs and next to the bulbs you're going to see there it says what voltage they are and what milliamps they are as well like i say don't worry too much if you're changing an incandescent for an led the milliamps is going to be fine just double check the voltage a third way of doing it if you've come unstuck both them ways you haven't got it on the sides and you haven't got the circuit diagram is with a meter just where the old bulb is as shown here uh, just put the probes of your meter if you haven't got a meter you can pick up one for about eight pounds something like a cheap multimeter put it on volts put uh, start off with ac uh, turn your unit on this is the only problem here now you're gonna have to have your unit plugged in after you've took it all apart plug it in and check the voltage uh, across them two connections try on ac first of all most bulbs are ac you should get a reading between maybe 6 and 12 volts, something like that. If it doesn't give you any reading, then switch the meter to DC. Then you should get a reading there. So that's another method. That's method number three. Now method number four is just drop me a comment down below. And hopefully I may be able to find out where it is. I may be able to find the circuit diagram or as it a good guess of what the bulb should be. So you've got four options there. And don't forget, I've got a super thanks at the bottom for any information required, it's just 50 quid. So just give me 50 pound, we'll sort that out straight away. No, honestly, I'm not bothered. If you wanna give me 50 pence or something like that, that'd be great, it's gonna help the channel, I'll go and buy something else later on. But I'm sure you'll get it in one of them first threes, but if you really get unstuck, give me a little call. I'm, I'm gonna help you for nothing, so don't worry about that. Okay, so that's it. So I'll show you the four different circuits there, roughly what to look for in the diagram as well. I've covered that okay, so just make sure I'm not missing anything. Now also these bulbs, uh, one thing to consider, we're going to get onto the colours in a minute, don't panic, but one thing to consider here is the bulbs, which colour to get. You can, now we've got this multitude of colours to get. Uh, you know, white's great, a cool white, a warm white, something like that's going to be great. But uh, on these Marantzis, Sansuis that I've got here, etc., you may get a, a bulb that's got a filter over the top of it i'm going to show you a picture one there this is at marantz i think it's got a blue filter so 
the, the bulb, even though it's incandescently white, they try to change it to a blue. So you may want to look for a blue coloured bulb, either a normal blue, an ice blue, something like that, to replace that bulb wherever you took that out. It may have a colour filter. Or if it hasn't got a colour filter on the bulb, you may just want to check the back of your unit here when you've undone it, is that this has got any film on the back of it. You may get a green film or something like that, a blue film or some coloured film. So you may want to go for that colour again bulb, uh, or you may just want to do a white one and let that film do its business kind of thing, do, do what it's supposed to do. But on the bulb itself, as you can see, if there's one a film on the bulb, then it's best maybe to get a bulb of that colour uh, that the film's over it. But what I've done here, this here is an ice white, and it really does ping. It probably don't show in the video, which is a shame. And that meter there has got a green kind of film at the back. Uh, I could have put a white bulb in there, a normal white bulb. But what I've done here, I've actually put a green bulb in there to make that green even more lush. So we've mixed a couple of colours here. we mixed a white, a cool white, and a green to get that kind of effect and just give that meter. It is supposed to be green. It's just showing out more, and it really does look nice. So that's that. So now what we're going to do, we're going to show you them colours again. These are the colours I've tried out. We're going to show you on this receiver here what they look like. may not be the greatest, but may give you some kind of idea. Also, I'm going to show you a picture, uh, each individual one, and that picture is from the back plate of here. I've used that back plate, which is three little sockets that they shine through. So that will give you some kind of idea of the intensity and the colour as well, hopefully. So the first one we're going to show on this sand so is blue. So that's what blue looks like. Um, and as you can see, it's not so bright as the white, uh, it has a bit, bit of a blue tinge to it, but it's okay, it's not too bad, it may kind of suit you. Like I say, this has got a greenish background anyway here, uh, it's kind of like really got green and white, so maybe a blue is not a great colour, but if you've got a blue dial or some blue writing, then maybe go for a blue, but you know, it's up to you. Then we're going to show you ice blue next, this is ice blue. And ice blue is a little bit brighter than the normal blue. It's just got a, little, a bit more white to it, i.e. ice blue. Then we've got green, which uh, doesn't look too bad here because we've got the green meter as well on this um, Sansui. And the green background doesn't look too bad. It's kind of, it makes it different kind of thing. It makes it different. So uh, like I say, maybe a mix and match there. Use the ice white or warm white and go with a green for the meter. So that's something maybe to think about. Then we've got pink. Uh, it's more of a violently kind of colour, this, I think. It's not really pink. I think it's more of a um, a, a, a violet colour. And it's not so great for the VU meter. It's struggling to show that VU meter with that pink. It's not quite, you know, it's got the intensity. Then we've got yellow. Uh, and as you can see, the meter's really dark on here again. And the dial, the dial's kind of okayish. But like I say, maybe you should match up what colours are on your dial, what colours behind your meter, that kind of stuff, match them colours up. But you can always experiment, obviously. Uh, then we got the red. Uh, and, we, and again, the red's not bright enough for this particular dial, uh, for the tuning meter, signal strength meter here. Uh, it doesn't show that up at all. Now we've got the uh, cool white. This is the one I do like here, especially on this unit here. It really makes it pop. And with that green, it just, uh, it looks like a brand new unit. It really does. So that, that, that looks really great. We've got a warm white. Now this warm white is like an incandescent kind of colour and that's pretty good. It'll make you look a bit more old fashioned kind of thing. So hopefully you're picking that up. Like I say, it just makes you look a bit old uh, and may bring it to more like the, uh, the era that the unit was in. Uh, then we've got an incandescent. Uh, th th this is more of a warmer colour yet again. It's a little bit duller than the warm white, just a little bit duller. Um, but you know it looks quite nice this, this is incandescent but this incandescent is a proper bulb it isn't LED it's got the filament in there it's a filament bulb we're going to come to that in a minute it's going to draw a little bit more current it's going to get hotter these bulbs all run nice and cool and maybe if you've got a sealed unit or something like that uh, it's going to keep it cooler inside it's going to keep it cooler in the summer as well you know, it's quite hot here in the UK at the moment and having something on that's generating heat, and these little lamps can generate heat, the little incandescent ones can, but the LED ones doesn't. It can generate quite a bit of heat. If you've got a sealed unit as well, it's going to generate more heat inside. So if you've got some parts in there that get quite warm anyway, it's only going to add to that a little bit as well. Okay, then we've got the warm white 12 volts. Now the reason I put these 12 volts, I'm actually supplying it with seven, but it just gives you an idea that you can put a 12 volt bulb in a seven volt unit it's just going to be duller. So if you didn't want it quite as bright, maybe you didn't want that warm white, you still wanted to tone it down even more, just have the display so it just comes on enough for you to see it. 
you can do that as well like you can you can choose that 12 volt even though it's for a 7 volt unit you can go up a few volts it doesn't matter but you won't want to do it the other way around you want to put you won't want to where you're supposed to have a 12 volt bulb put a 7 volt bulb because you're going to blow it probably first of all it's going to be unbelievably bright but it probably pop probably won't last very long so don't do that but the other way around you can do but don't forget you can get control of these bulbs which i do explain in that video as well but how you actually position these in the sockets you can turn them 360 degrees which will change the intensity of the light because obviously the light will ping this way if you're facing it this way if you're facing it towards the back more light will go towards the back some will come through here it'll tone it down if you face it the other way etc you've got a bit you've got like a volume control but light control should we say a dimmer kind of control by just turning that bulb round it may not be vast but you've got 10 or 20 percent there probably of the brightness you can change but i've got these facing outwards that way and that way across that dial and this one obviously facing towards the camera so that's that like i say you can mix them a green and white so that's green and white there on the unit but you can see it here as well that is green and white so hopefully that's uh, showed that it's, it's good to mix the bulbs i mean you may you may want to get a set an, you know, an idea just thinking out a few ideas really you may want to get a set this unit uses three you may want to get three as in this case cool white and you may think i'll just experiment with that I'll, I'll, i've got the cool white just in case i put a cool white there but i'll get a green one just one green bulb not going to cost you a lot and i'll try it with green but then again you may want to do but like I'll show you the green unit here. This is the, a dial in green. You may think I oh, quite like that green, a bit rotelish kind of thing, kind of like a rotel kind of display. Uh, for what they are, one pound sixty each, and the more you buy it, they get a little bit cheaper as well. I mean, you may want to get free green, try that out, and free cool white, and try that out. Then again, you may want to get free cool white and free warm white. So yeah, extra expense. You took it all apart. Another fiver, it's going to cost you something like that. You might as well just have a go. I think you know what I mean. I know we're trying to save money. But for the extra expense and the time it took, just have an afternoon, a few hours, just taking it apart, changing all the bulbs, giving the actual front plate a nice clean inside and back as well, just sparkles it up. Now, I won't missed anything here, everyone. No, no, talking about save money, just going to come to this last. I'm going to save money, am I, Mick? Well, you are, because uh, in the long run, you will. It's going to take a little bit of time, admittedly. But uh, changing these incandescent, you may want to change these incandescent to LEDs, you will save a little bit of money because they draw a little bit less current. So how much current less do they draw, Mick? Well, I've done a little experiment on my, this one down the bottom here. Now, I just want to mention this, I forgot to mention this. This has got the green meter, which has come up quite nice. But here I've got the ice blue, and it's okay-ish at night. You know, I mean, it's okay-ish at the moment, but at night it kind of comes out better, and it gives that a nice green display there. So you want to maybe experiment on a few different colours as well. No, it's up to you but uh, you know other than that stay safe and go for the colors your display is i'll just mention all that anyway i used the 441 here that uses four bulbs three for the actual unit here and one for here so we've got four bulbs we'll do a little video here of showing the four bulbs incandescent what current it draws how many um watts does it draw and as you, you'll see in this video with four bulbs incandescent it draws 16 watts as with the volume down, everything turned down to zero, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and with the LED ones, it goes down to 10 watts. So we're saving six watts. May not sound a lot, but you are saving six watts of energy. And over a period of time, that will start, in, that would increase with time. You know, it'll still be six watts per hour but as the hours go. And I usually have my equipment on here roughly during the day. It's on from 10 o'clock to five o'clock kind of thing. So I'm, I'm about seven hours. But for a typical person, you may be just using it two hours. So two hours a day times by the old year, you're going to save 4.3 kilowatts, I think it is, something like that, in power. And going by 24 pence it is in the UK, a 24p a unit, I'm probably going to save £1.4, £1.3 pence a year if I add it on two hours. But most of my stuff's on about probably seven hours. So I'm probably going to save five, six pounds, something like that a year. And over a few years that adds up. And you know, don't forget these electricity prices go up pretty much every year anyway. So I just thought I'd mention that, you're getting less heat and you're going to save a little bit of money, there's a little bit of energy. If you're a bit energy conscious, you're going to save a little bit of energy. And if you get the combination right, it really does pop. It really, really does. So hopefully that's give you some kind of idea. Any questions, obviously put it in the comments down below. Of why I think that these ain't, you know, these are pretty good light. I mean, going back a few videos ago, a couple of years ago, I quite like the incandescent ones. I thought like, especially on the Marantz, it just made them look old and as they are. 
But uh, after having a little go on this Sansui, and this looks like a brand new unit, it really does. Uh, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite pleased with that, I really am, I'm really pleased with that, especially that green, it's quite a nice little feature, I can have that the colour it's supposed to be, they, you know, they kind of tinge that green with a green filter at the back, but now I've got a green bulb, I can make that look really lush. Okay, that is it, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.